velvet. Such a beautiful fabric, but so troublesome to sew. Here's some tricks and tips to help you sew it. Hi, Chanel here with another Sew Bit, bringing you weekly videos to help you get better with each sewing project and more creative. So be sure to subscribe. So if you've ever worked with velvet, you know how tricky it can be. It slips all over the place. It crushes really easily. <laughs> it's, it's kind of a pain, but it's a great fabric. I love it. I actually sewed a lot with velvet back in the day when I was making evening gowns. And these are actually a couple of my leftover dresses. Um, I love this one because velvet, I love it so much because of the luxury feel to it and the density of the color. You get just really rich color from it. Um, so like this was one of the things I love to do is like dress taller and thinner. That would make gowns for that reason. Uh, although I was dressing actresses that were tall and thin, so whatever. <laughs> um, so I love the black velvet sides, and then I had this dull poly crepe in the front, and um, it just kind of helps create a nice, beautiful silhouette, whether you need it or not. <laughs> then the gown back here is um, a gown, one of my last gowns I made uh, for my soap opera stars, and that was a purple silk velvet with a, a twist in the, it had silk charmeuse um, weaving from front to back in it, and. So one of the things I want to show you is uh, how trying to sew linings or slippery fabric to velvet really is troublesome. So, um, but it's worth it. So, but there's a couple tricks you can you can do to, and that's what I'm going to show you. Uh, so silks come in all kinds of varieties. Um, we have the silk velvet. Is this this is a silk velvet that um, I had in my storage for. A long time and one beautiful thing about this is it doesn't crush so bad you actually have to store it kind of um, the front you know the napped part together and then roll it and it won't crush so much I have this other acetate fabric this is an acetate um, probably like a, ray, a mix of rayon acetate velvet and it crushes a lot easier and um, um, it's just they're they're different they're different fabrics. Um, I've used, I made a lot of gowns out of silk velvet, and I'm going to show you a couple of them. This is one um, I love to do bead trims right here, and I actually added all this to the ends there, and then it's all lined in here. It was probably a china silk, and then hand stitched together there. Um, this was um, this was actually the skirt part. This was a beautiful silk velvet. Um, one of the the better silk velvets. There's different silk velvets. Um, some have more silk in it, and um, the more silk in it, the, the softer it is. This was the gown. Um, oh, that's not the other one. That's it. This is actually a gown I haven't made yet. I designed this one in the shower, but <laughs> but this is the gown that was this right here. So I actually made it. I don't think I ever had anybody wear it. I think I had it in a fashion show, and then it never really got worn. Uh, here is a I wanted to show you what um, stretch velvets look like because there are, um, this is like a mulberry brown stretch velvet. It doesn't, it feels just like a velour pant and it feels a little on the cheap side kind of thing, but I, it did turn out to be a cool dress. It showed up on um, one of the soap opera magazine things with Crystal Carson in it. Um, so it looked, it looked great on and then, um, I don't really, I don't really love stretch. I love working with stretch velvet because it's easier to sew and it's, uh, you know, fits good and all that kind of stuff. But here's a, I think I have, I got. They all kind of look alike. This is a, a, one of my leftover stretch velvets. So it looks, it's really great. I mean, you can actually make evening gowns out of it, and uh, well, they they do now the the cheaper versions of them. So I guess so. But now this is probably one of my best silk velvet um, just is that's the back of it it just feels so good I wish you could feel this <laughs> um, the top line um, silk velvets if it's hundred percent silk kind of rare 
Um, and then there's a mulberry silk that's like the rarest um, silk velvet in the world, I hear, and it's made from the mulberry moth. I read about it. Don't have a picture of the mulberry moth, but okay. <laughs> um, then there's another velvet called, I think, Devore, and it's a burnt out velvet. I thought I had a shawl made out of it, and I can't find it, um, but this is, it's similar to this. This isn't actually, this is like a burnt out, um, but it's got a silk, it's um, not technically, it's got the fuzz on it. It's a, uh, it looks li like that, but it will be more velvet like. That one's more of a embossed, um, I don't know, it's kind of strange. Good. I'm not quite sure what it is. Um, and then there are uh, the sweatsuit fabrics velour. This is actually a pair of my pants, and um, it's like a velour velvet. And these are much more forgiving with pressing and you can wash them and everything like that. And velvets, you know, you can wash too. Um, just try it. Get a swatch of it and try it. It comes out pretty cool. I had a, a big piece of uh, the acetate velvet like this. Um, this, this you can hear like that too. I had a big piece of this in green last Christmas and it was all crunched up like this and I threw it in the washer and you're supposed to use it just a little bit of uh, detergent and um, it came out beautiful and then I tumble dried it too so it actually worked but it also frays like crazy um, on the end so you want to overlock <laughs> I learned that too late overlock or stitch down the ends of it um, and also velvet tears so um, it's just on the grain, I think I tore this one here. Yes, so you can actually tear it, um, you know, clip it on the cross grain and tear it, and then it um, it just ends up like this. You'll have some fuzz come off of it, um, and then it will stop fraying. So that's actually something else too you can do before you wash it also. Um, then there's these kind of velvets here. This is a, um, this is a pretty cheap, uh, is it a velo crushed velour or something? usually about eight dollars a yard or so um, um, pretty pretty cheap uh, you don't want to make an evening gown out of that <laughs> there is these are velveteens and these you see in the interior world you know interior design world a lot so they're like a cotton velveteen the backs just like a normal woven fabric and um, you can make beautiful jackets and things out of the velveteens um, even pants you know Look at this yellow. I love this. I actually found this out. I'm gonna do a big, I'm gonna do a big cape, um, like a color blocked cape. Uh, I have some actual beautiful 100% cashmere and navy, so I'm gonna team it up with velveteen because I can't find the cashmere in the yellow. And these are some pants I made last year, um, not of velvet, but just kind of like a cotton velveteen but um, a little bit it has a little bit of stretch in it too but you want to treat this also like velvet um, slips when you're sewing it so you want to sew it close together um, and don't crush it kind of thing um, I wanted to show you some of the tools that you need for uh, this fabric here for working with velvet for starters you need the vela board I'm going to show you um, how to press um, this and this is uh, real important, but there, if you don't have one, you can use another piece of velvet. I'll show you that. And then, real important, the Teflon foots that help slide, um, help the, they don't kind of, they help slide against slippery fabrics and stuff like that. So, Teflon foots are really good. You can just get, find these on Google for like five bucks a piece. Then, there's these roller feet. These are pretty fun. Um, it has a little <laughs> roller on it. Um, I think these work a little bit better. And then there's also silk pins. Um, they're really much thinner, the little heads, um, and there's a little bit of a you know, problem when you get used to the larger pins. Um, and pinning close together, I'm gonna show you that on the sewing machine too, will help a lot of that. So um, let me show you some tips on how to press velvet. Okay, with pressing, velvet you always have to have some other napped fabric underneath or a vela board or the needle boards that I have never bought <laughs> but they're about um, they're a little slimmer than this and they're like little pins and needles sticking up and really help prevent crushing but this is kind of like a, a napped fabric of some sort this is from years of 
sewing velvet here. Um, and I've actually I've had this forever, probably 20 years. And it used to be kind of clean like that, but um, this takes on the dyes. So how these work is you want to take velvet and you don't ever want to press it. You don't want to crush uh, velvet. So you actually want to be putting uh, your velvet um, nap sides together and then pressing from here. Um, you never would just press right on here. I actually did that right here to show you how it pressed. So, so I'm going to get my hot iron. I have a cordless. <laughs> if you actually took it and pressed right on top wait you can see the whole iron piece right here that would just completely crush this nap so how you iron these are you put it down here and you don't press hard it's more of a just steaming like here and then you just gently press naps to nap and then you don't have a crush right here so you can see where it's crushed and then where it's not and it ironed it steamed it beautifully this fabric was pretty crushed up so it's just more of a steam so if you had to take this like this piece of fabric here that is sewn together you would just be lightly steaming this here you don't want to hard press it and then you can kind of finger press it from here like that then you have your seams pressed open um, also if you don't have a vela board or a needle board, you can also press velvet to velvet. So you could, I, so a lot of times I would have like a scrap of velvet I'd put underneath my ironing board, and then you can press, but again, not hard. And you press the velvet onto the other velvet, which is another, you know, nap. And this is just very, very light. I'm not crushing it, and then it. It presses this part also really nicely. So with um, you just don't want to end up with that. <laughs> but, um, that also is same how with corduroys and anything with nap fabrics. You want to press it with another nap. So also what we have to work with is how to cut uh, velvet. When you cut it, you get a lot of hairs and fibers um, coming off of it too because um, velvet is um, it's woven like your warp and your weft threads the length and your cross grains and then there's extra threads put into the weave that's how you get the what's called the pile of the fabric and if you could kind of see how these little threads right here those are extra threads that are put in the weave and then they're trimmed off and that's why you get that little nappy uh, feel on fabrics called the nap. Uh, you also really have to make sure when you're cutting velvets that you cut everything in the right direction. Like, um, I don't know if you know anything about nap. I do have a sew bit video on naps. I'll put a card up here that you can click on and it tells, takes you to sew bit number 12 um, where you will know, it'll tell you all about naps a little bit more. But if you cut, you wanna cut everything from the top down in, um, if you switch them around, you put the foot down to the top down, it's really confusing, <laughs> you'll have shading differences. You'll have a dark side and then a light side. So it works the same with corduroys and uh, some satins, uh, definitely velvets the worst. And um, But I learned it by making a huge mistake in a corduroy pair of pants. When I looked down, I went, oh, one side was light, one side was lark, or dark. So um, definitely know about the naps of fabric. Also now when you're sewing them, um, you, I use size 11 needles on a lot of things, I guess because my whole career has been about evening gowns and um, I like the knit, um, the ballpoint size 11s, um, but velvet is a woven fabric. So I think either one of the 11s, the woven or the knit 11s are the best. Um, so that's your needle. So now I'm gonna show you how, um, some tips on how to sew velvet together. So to start sewing velvet pieces, I've got a couple swatches here I'm gonna show you. Um, I'm gonna try this Teflon foot here. Um, it's supposed to help with the sliding. And let's see if I get my machine set up. I got it just on an average stitch. Uh, so not basting, but not 
too short. Actually, the shorter might help more. I'm actually going to make it a little bit shorter. I usually don't sew with short stitches. But right here, I have pins spaced out, kind of, you know, a little more spaced. And then here, I have it pins more uh, together. I'm just I'm going to sew actually over them and see which one is easier because this fabric, it just slips like crazy. I haven't sewn with velvet for a while, so um, we'll see what happens here. But <laughs> um, So I'm going to start here, then reverse it, get it locked. And if I take the pins out, actually sewing a smaller stitch, too, is actually a little bit easier. It's not slipping too bad. And velvet, um, it's... Um, it kind of can stick together if you kind of stick the naps together. It's actually not s slipping too bad. It's good. It starts to get a little pucker in here. It's kind of a problem. What I like to do with velvet is, I'm just going to pucker that, is to have a lot of pins together and then I just sew right over the pins. I know a lot of people, um, they use this like glue type stuff that actually will stick to it, but I've never used gluey stuff. so. Um, uh, in couture sewing, you don't really use gluey stuff. <laughs> but um, this right here, just this is one occasion where you can actually just sew over pins. Snap. And that actually keeps it together really well. And I think a, a tighter stitch will help, but again, you got to make sure um, you um, don't need to take it out. So it actually sewed pretty, pretty well together. Um, a lot of times this will slip a little bit more. I think the ones with the pins, this actually sews, this looks a lot better. And um, yeah, it's kind of puckered all a little bit here when I didn't have the pins in it. But I do like um, to sew over the pins and just in that one incident. And then those seams sew really well together. And then you just got to press the seams open and I'll show you that part too. Um, here is a sample of, now the tricky part with sewing velvet is when you have to sew lining to the velvet and um, again I have these a lot of pins I'll sew over that and then again with not a lot of pins and we'll see how that sews together I'll start up here and again I'm going to put it on like my little bit tighter stitch I'll start here it's starting to slip off right here and I'll have to start struggling with it here. I'm actually going to increase the stitch length, which means it goes, the machine goes faster, and that's when this lining starts to slip over to the side. I'm going to put it back on a tighter stitch, and uh, now I'm going to try to sew over the pins. That little knot's in here. I might want to tuck the pins in a little farther because they, that way, then they, it's kind of the threads are going more over the pin instead of the tip of the pin. And just so, uh, see, it's just so much more relaxed. And, <laughs> and uh, just, they don't, much less slipping. So this is the acetate lining next to this. It's, um, it's crunchier and it slips a lot. But now the next lining I'm coming up to really slips. This is the rayon ambiance and it's very slippery. Um, you also have uh, China silk which is slippery too but at least China, the silks are a little gummy or sticks to the velvet. So again we're going to start here with just a few pins and it's slipping a little bit but this Teflon foot helps a lot too. I'm going to sew over that. And then now we have the, a lot of pins tucked in to see how they uh, I'm always so afraid to sew over pins, so <laughs> just keep your face away from them. It's sewing over really nice. If you hear any chips on it, check your needle because it could, could have uh, blunted a needle. So here is, so there's a little slipping here. And you kind of take the eye off of it, it starts to slip. We've got pins all over the place now. And this actually, this part did really well with this acetate lining. And then you can see right here how it really started to slip. That's where I didn't use very many pins at all. And then it did a little better with the pins. So I think the trick is the Teflon foot. You can also try these roller feet. Um, 
if you have any of these. I know walking feet are good. Um, I've never used a walking foot. Um, I just use these techniques, it seems like. I'm actually just going to practice real quick, see what on the other side of this to see. See, this really slipped right here on that one. <laughs> Actually, I'm not even sure. I think these were, and they apparently really weren't balanced out. And here's the roller foot. That seems to help it also. Actually, this is, yeah, this is whole lining is slipping in here. I don't have any pins at all here. But before you start sewing, just practice on a swatch because the more this slips off, all your sizing will change because um, you want these raw edges even to keep your sizes and your grain line um, change, you know, even, how you say. But um, that is some tricks on the sewing velvet. Use silk pins, a lot of them, sew on it. Um, also with lining too, you can try sewing on the other side. Actually, I like the Teflon foot. Try the other side. And this is again without it being pinned, but let's see what the when this happens all those <laughs> threads get caught that trick with that is to bring the thread through and then back and let's see how sewing on the other side of that not the lining um, yeah it looks that looks pretty good it didn't roll and stuff like that so with whatever velvet you're using definitely if you're sewing lining to it try it you know a couple samples and see what is going to be the best way because silk velvets will sew differently than the acetate velvets. The linings will all sew differently, but definitely do test swatches before you start on a garment. Okay, that's a lot of tips on velvet, but we still have more. What about washing your uh, velvet? For starters, if it's an evening gown or something like this, you probably want to dry clean it. <laughs> um, Try some handwork in there and linings. You don't really want to wash linings much. They tend to shrink more than the garment and then you really have a problem. Uh, to refresh in some velvets, you can just throw them in the dryer and it refreshes up the nap. Um, you also want to use just a little bit of, uh, if you're washing it, a little bit of detergent. No fabric softener, no bleach. They also say to hang dry it, um, hang it to dry or lay it flat. Lay it flat, really. Um, I say put it in the dryer on cool setting. Let it, it just refreshes the nap and all. Um, also, always buy just like an eighth of a yard more, especially of a fabric you don't know very well of, and do, use it for testing. Testing the sewing, testing the washing, and um, just get a little bit of practice in it before you go and, um, you know, sewing a time consuming, important outfit like that. So it's more for more videos on fabrics try my video on silks and all the varieties and also I have a video out on the best fabric for your project I'll leave those at the end of the videos and I'll see you in the next soap it